Welcome to part two of our segment on how things work on passive safety systems. And in this week's episode, we're going to take you through airbags, seatbelts, and some of the soft touch elements that we see inside of our vehicles. So let's kick off straight away with airbags and seatbelts. So seatbelts are known as our primary restraint system and airbags are known as our supplementary or secondary restraint system. And you might have even seen on some of the airbags the letters SRS and that's what that stands for. So let's start off with our seatbelts. Seatbelts have come a long way in terms of technology and design. And in fact in the early days seatbelts were pretty dangerous and that's a probably the reason why a lot of people today still feel like they don't want to wear a seatbelt. But all things have changed on that and the designs are fantastic. So there's a couple of elements for us to consider when it comes to seatbelts. The first is, is that seatbelts are a little bit wider than they were in the past and I'm going to touch on that a little bit later. The second is seatbelts are actually very stretchy. The third thing is seatbelts have pretensioners which pull us back into our chairs with pyrotechnics. And the fourth thing is, is that seatbelts also have load force limiters. So when we breach a certain force on the seatbelt itself, it's going to allow us to continue moving forward without creating severe injuries for us. Now let's move on to our supplementary restraint system, which is our airbags. Now the way that airbags work is fascinating and I want to reference one of my favorite scientists, Pascal. And he has a law that tells us that for the same force, the smaller the surface area that's acting on a surface, the greater the pressure. So I want you to try and do this experiment yourself and take your index finger and push it onto your chest muscle hard. It's quite sore, isn't it? But if you take a flat hand with a bigger surface area now and you push over here, you can hardly feel anything. And that's exactly what an airbag is doing for us. When the airbag is inflated and we move forward, the airbag is taking the entire surface area of our upper body and absorbing all that force and therefore we have less pressure. Now imagine the difference between that and the small surface area of your steering wheel and the forces that you would feel then. Now the technology on airbags has increased in leaps and bounds, both from an electronics point of view, from a control unit point of view, and just the way the airbag works in general. Now there's a few rules under which an airbag will only deploy. So first of all, if we have a look at a front impact of a vehicle, the airbag will only deploy if that impact is within 30 degrees of the center line of the vehicle. Anything beyond 30 degrees, the airbag control unit will consider that as a side impact and in fact your side impact airbags will now deploy, not your front airbags. The second thing is, is that if a vehicle rolls over, it is highly unlikely that any of the airbags will deploy, except if you've got rollover mitigation technology on your vehicles and therefore the sensors that exist there will be able to deploy some of the airbags in the event of a rollover. And obviously if you get rear-ended in a vehicle, your front and side airbags are not going to deploy. So please, if you've had an accident in a vehicle and your airbags haven't deployed, really the acid test is, were you severely injured in that accident? And if the answer is no, then the airbags have actually done their job. Because you must remember the force and the velocity with which an airbag deploys. They're deploying at between three and four hundred kilometers an hour. It's a bomb essentially that is going off. And so the acoustic damage that you'll have as well is quite severe. So you almost don't want an airbag to go off. It must be a last resort. Now a modern control unit on an airbag can actually determine a few interesting things. It can determine the speed of the vehicle that's hitting you as well as the weight of that vehicle hitting you. And then it's going to do some very interesting things because these days we have multi-stage airbags which factor in those conditions as well as the weight and the position of the person sitting on the seat. So the seat in the vehicle itself has load sensors which can determine where on the seat they're sitting, how heavy the person is sitting on that seat, as well as, as I've said, the speed and the weight of the vehicle that is impacting into you. And based on that, it is going to partially or fully deploy the airbag. So sensational stuff. And in fact, the latest generation airbags are now also working on staging how they deflate 
So currently airbags have two great big holes in them. So immediately that they inflate, they deflate. But now they have valves on them that actually regulate at which rate they deflate. So sensational stuff on the airbags. All right, so we've gone through the theory of airbags and seat belts. Now let's go and have a look at them in action in the vehicle itself. So we have two main primary restraint systems. We have our seat belt and our airbags. And our seat belt is our primary restraint system. And our airbags are our supplementary restraint system. And you might have seen on some of the airbags that it says SRS, and that's exactly what it stands for, supplementary restraint system. So having a look at the seat belts first, Modern seat belts are actually remarkably stretchy. I can't apply enough force now, but in, in an accident, my body weight would actually cause this belt to stretch slightly. And that's again going to assist me to slow down slower and not have a sudden stop, which would cause injury. The second thing that these seat belts do is they have what's called a pretensioner. So it's a pyrotechnic device that actually explodes, it releases a gas, and as it releases the gas, it tensions up the seat belt and puts me in the correct position to take full advantage of both the seat belt and the airbag. And it also reduces any slack in the seat belt that would cause dramatic injury from impulse forces if I had to hit the, the, the seat belt if it was slack. So nice pre-tensioning of the seat belt puts me in the correct position. Now, as I experience the forces on the seat belt, as we've mentioned, the seat belt material stretches slightly, but the second thing it does is we have what's called a load force limiter. So if I exceed a certain force on the seat belt, it is actually very, very tightly spring loaded. So it's going to allow me to move slightly forward again with the seat belt further reducing the energy. When it comes to the airbag, the way the airbag works is the airbag deploys very rapidly. Now, ultimately, this airbag is deploying at three to 400 kilometers per hour. If I'm not wearing a seat belt, I'm going to meet the airbag while it's deploying, and that's going to actually cause more injuries than good. So it's very, very important that we have our seat belt on to take advantage of the airbag, because ultimately we want to impact the airbag as it's actually deflating. One of the things that I wanted to talk to is that there seems to be this old housewife's tale that if your seat belt is not properly anchored that your airbags actually switch off and that's not the case your airbags will still deploy but it's obviously not first prize to be hitting the airbag while it's deploying as we said earlier another thing that we don't necessarily realize about a modern vehicle is the fact that there's a lot of soft touch elements inside the cockpit of the vehicle which are designed to prevent supplementary injuries in the event of an impact so one of the things that's going to happen if I have a full frontal impact is my arms are going to let go of the steering wheel and they're going to start flaying around and they're going to actually impact a lot of these surfaces quite hard. And you'll notice that all these surfaces, whether it's these switches over here or the indicator stalks or even the sides of the vehicle are all nice and soft touch. And that's designed, as I said, to prevent supplementary injuries, which is very, very cool. All right, so we've really just had a look at some of the basic passive safety features on a vehicle. So the chassis, the airbags, seat belts, and some of the soft touch elements. But there's a lot more exciting design work that's gone into some of the passive safety features. And we're certainly going to have a look at those in future episodes of How Things Work. So until next time, see you then.